This question comes to us from Aladip718 and says, Hey Kyle, first and foremost, thank you for the videos. You're welcome. They are entertaining, informative, and enjoyable. Possible topic suggestion might include the VA home loan. Well, the VA home loan is something that I didn't know about until after I was in the military and then people were talking about buying a home and all this stuff and I was like, man, you guys are stupid. Why would you buy a home? That's dumb. Because I honestly never thought about buying a home. Like even when I first joined, I was like, maybe I'll do this for 20 years. I never was like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy a home someday. I don't know why it was not smart of me because at some point in your life, you should start thinking about it and it's better to start thinking about it sooner than later. For once, you can save. But you don't need to save because the VA home loan, you don't need a down payment. No, just kidding. You should still save, but you really don't need a down payment, which is one of the upsides to serving in the military is that I can get a home loan with zero dollars down, like literally over two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of debt without putting a dime down. That's insane. Because a lot of places are gonna require you to do 20%. To give a rough estimate, the homes that we were looking for were between 180 and 240. So I'm just gonna say 200 just to give us an even slice number. Most loans are gonna require 20% upfront like a 20% down payment for a $200,000 home. That's $40,000. Do you have $40,000 right now? Because I definitely don't. Close, sort of. But that's a lot of money. People don't have that kind of money. At least I don't. I don't think you guys probably do. If you do, kudos to you. You are an amazing person. Like, more amazing than anyone else I've ever met because I don't think I know anybody that has just $40,000 saved up just for a down payment. Now, I know people that are like retired and have like bunch of money in the bank and stuff like that, but I'm talking about people that are my age, people that are younger than me, people that are going to be buying a house soon or in the future. I don't know anybody that has that kind of money saved up to put it as a down payment and make that 20% cut. Now, yes, you can get some home loans that don't require that even if you don't go through the VA loan. There are some, some banks you can go through, but for the most part, it's gonna be very, very hard to not put anything down unless you have the VA home loan. The process, I barely dealt with it. It was, my loan officer did pretty much all the work. They are like, hey, I need this, and you send it to them. And then they go, hey, I need this, and you send it to them. And they're like, hey, I need this and you send it to them, and they keep doing that over and over for like two months straight. But for the most part, I mean, like I didn't really do a whole lot because they just filled out everything for me. And I'm just gonna explain the process of how I use the VA home loan. Uh, if this is the answer you're looking for, uh, hopefully it is. But if not, I'm sorry, but this is all I know about the VA home loan, and it's pretty much the whole process of buying a home with a VA home loan. So. Uh, what you're going to do is you are going to just contact a realtor. Thankfully, Blake and Katie, which live here in Vegas, we met them from YouTube because they're another military vlogging couple. We've been talking to them for a year and a half. Found out we were coming here a year after we had been talking to them via online, social media. It's crazy. YouTube is crazy. But we had talked to them for a year, then found out we were coming to Vegas, and we're like, hey, we're coming to Vegas. Can we stay with you? So we stayed with them for two months. And while we stayed with them, we were looking for a home the whole time but they had a realtor help them find the place they're living in, but they're renting right now. And they were like, here's our realtor's information. You can hit her up. So we hit up Megan. Megan Strickland was our realtor here in Las Vegas. So we contacted Megan and we got set up. We got here. She gave us a list of homes. Everybody in Las Vegas, at least they use the same list. Doesn't matter what realtor you go through, what company they work for, does not matter. They all get the exact same list. So kind of like Zillow, except they get more up to date than Zillow. So as soon as that list gets updated, you can have it send emails to you every time a home in our area that we were searching met our criteria. So we had things like we wanted a two story home with a garage. We wanted a pool. No, we didn't want a pool. That just happened to be with the house that we liked. So we looked at like 25 houses and like two of them had pools. And this was the only one with a nice pool, but we like the house itself. So you get in contact with your realtor, she hooks you up, you look for houses, uh, you keep getting these email lists. Every time someone puts a new home on the market, bam, it shows up in your email. You check it out, you're like, oh yeah, let's go see it or not. And so what we would do is we would just come up with a list of, right when you start out, like there would be in the area we were looking for a home, there would be, like Vegas market is insane. Now a lot of people didn't understand. When we were looking for our home on our daily vlogging channel, so many people commented, like just pick a house, uh, it, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. Like, 
And like people didn't understand. Like I talked to people from back home and they're like, holy crap. Like the house I just bought back in Iowa was on the market for a year before I bought it. And I'm like, yeah, no. The house that we bought was on the market for one day. It was, this house was on the market for like six hours and we live in it. And we're not even the only people that put an offer down on it. Us and another couple put an offer down on this home within three hours of this being posted online. Like we got an email, we went, we contacted our realtor said, I wanna go look at this house. We both met up here, we liked it. We went back home and we like emailed Megan. We're like, we want the house, send an offer. And someone else sent an offer, the couple that came after us that day sent an offer too. So like the housing market here is like boom, boom, boom. You have a nice house, it's gonna be gone within 24 hours. Like that's just how it is. If you found a house, there were a lot of homes on our list that were on the market for like 10, 15, 20 days. And that's very unusual. And most of the time it's because it didn't meet a lot of people's criteria. Either like the backyard was tiny or it was like a one stall garage or someone smoked in it. And they, there, there was something wrong with like every home that we went, we're like, ah, we just couldn't really call this home. So that was one thing to consider. It didn't have anything to do with the VA home loan, but just Vegas itself is insane. You literally have to stay up to date like every minute on your email and check because that home that you might love will be gone in 24 hours. And you have to be the first person or the first few people to go check it out and then one of the first to put an offer on it. But not only that, you have to have the best offer on it. It is a seller's market here in Las Vegas. Other places, it is a buyer's market. A lot of places, like when a house is on the market for a year and it sells, that is called a buyer's market. If the seller needs to sell and it takes a year to sell, that sucks. Like if you need to sell your car tomorrow and it takes a year to sell your car, you are gonna be mad. So you're probably gonna start lowering the price because you're like, I just need to get money for this right now. And here, not like that. Like most homes, people, honestly, the offer goes over what it was listed as. We originally offered what this house was worth. The other people offered a higher price than what this house was listed. But the people that own this house said they liked us better than the other couple and said, if you meet us halfway, will agree to you guys. We also wrote the owners a personal letter um, about why we love the house and why we wanted it and that we would take pride in it and all this stuff and um, just to kind of get that edge. And apparently it worked. And it was actually sent in to us from some subscribers that told us, hey, you should write them a personal letter when you want a house because it might help sway them, which was totally true. So if you're ever gonna buy a house, just write them a letter if you really want the house. Not saying it will work, but it definitely might raise your chances. All right, let's get back on track. So after you go through this whole thing and you get your list of homes and you're looking at homes, what you're gonna do in that time period is your realtor might refer you to a loan officer. It was who she personally used when she got her house here in Vegas. And so she just like knew him really well. So she, the reason she referred us to him is because she was like, if something gets messed up, I can call him and yell at him and I love that. Because initially we tried to go through USAA, which is like a military kind of based uh, bank. And they, they're not military based, they just cater a lot to military. Um, so everybody's like, yeah, go through USAA, USAA, all this stuff. It was terrible. That was like the worst experience ever because it's so hard to get a hold of USAA. And then you gotta call them and then you gotta go through like 900 buttons. Press one, press seven, press 12, press nine. What's your middle name? Press seven, press eight. What's your cat's name? And I'm like, bruh, I'm just trying to talk to you about this home loan I'm trying to get. And we had a loan officer and then you'd have to like dial her extension, but then she was like in another state. She was in Texas. So it was an hour ahead time zone. And then I was working like an off shift and like things have just been hectic. It was just a no go. Like dealing with USAA absolutely sucked because it wasn't personal. Jacques was our loan officer and I have his cell number. I could call him at any point in the day. Like he would send me an email, didn't matter what time it was. If I had a question, I'd just call him and he'd explain over the phone. This is how it should be. This is simple. So we had our loan officer and we had our realtor. Now the loan officer is gonna be the one that pretty much takes care of all the VA loan stuff. They're the ones that are getting me the loan. Your loan officer is who's going to get you the loan. So if you're using the VA loan, that's all they're gonna do is they're just gonna get the VA loan paperwork and they're gonna ask you for certain things and they're gonna plug and play all this stuff in this paperwork and then they're gonna submit it back to the VA and then they'll have to review it and then approve it and then it gets sent back so it's like, hey, you can go through these banks and all this stuff. Honestly, I don't really know 
the details of what happened other than he just kept asking me for things and whenever he asked for something I would just give it to him uh, he needed things like my LES which is your leave and earning statement so basically it's like your paycheck every month it's like a stub that tells you how much you get paid every month, how much taxes you pay, and they keep track of everything. But then they also want to know every single bank account that you have, any source of other income that you have, your spouse's income. Uh, you need like from all of my bank, I have three different banks, and they wanted a three month printout of the last three months of all transactions, which I actually had overdrafted in one of my bank accounts because I thought I had paid things off but I hadn't and they came out like a week later and then it like overdrafted once and then we got paid like the next day and then I never had a problem. Like we had plenty of money, I just had like, we were paying for a lot of things at once and it was right when I bought my car uh, and I paid cash for my car so I just like spent a lot of cash at once but then I like had my bills planned wrong and that like sucked because I overdrafted one time. Uh, but it really didn't affect anything because when I sent it into them and I like talked to him about it, he's like, oh, they don't care about that. He's like, they care about the end of month total in your bank account, which was like, our, it was fine. He's like, you got plenty of money. Like, it's not, I'm not worried about it. So I was like, cool, because I was scared that I overdrafted. Now they're going to deny this loan and I can't get a house. But the, that's just what they want is they just want to know like where all your money is coming from, what you're spending your money on, or how much money, how much money's coming in and how much money's going out. That's what they want to know. They add in a whole bunch of other stuff and your loan officer will pretty much just tell you when they need stuff. Uh, for me, I have student loans um, and then we had some issues. McKenna's credit isn't the best. I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. But like, I'm just explaining our situation. So, I, I love you. So, McKenna's credit wasn't the best. And so we actually had to write a letter of, of uh, something. It was like a LOE or LOA. Um, about why her credit wasn't the best. So we had to explain like, it's because of this. And then we sent it back to them. And then they're just like, cool, you told us why. And that makes sense. Because they have all the documents. And... They just pretty much want like confirmation, like you know why something is messed up or you know why a certain thing. So like for my bank accounts, anytime there was a payment that came in or went out that was over $1,000, they wanted to know exactly what it was for and why I was doing that. Say my mom borrowed $1,000 and then put $1,000 in or vice versa. I borrowed $1,000 and then gave it back. They would want me to explain like this thousand dollars on this date, blah, 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 was taken from my mom's bank account. And then on such and such date, I paid it back to my mom. Like that's what they want to know. So after like two months of looking for a home and finally finding this home and finally putting an offer down like two seconds after it's on the market and finally having them be like, yep, we'll accept your offer. We uh, submitted for our loan, uh, but the loan officer again does all of that. And like I said earlier, he's submitting or she is submitting your paperwork for the VA loan specifically because they'll ask you what kind of loan you're wanting to do. And if you're military, you would just be like, yeah, I want the VA loan. And they just set it up for you. And then you'll get like some piece of paper and you got to answer questions on it. Now, when you buy a home also, the VA actually has to send their own inspector to appraise it. So they have um, a, an appraisal inspector gadget I don't I don't know what they they're called exactly but an, an appraiser I guess um, they come and they appraise the house and what that means is they're gonna look at the house and they're gonna evaluate it with other homes in the neighborhood that have sold recently and they're gonna go this home is worth set amount of dollars so what happened with us is the appraiser actually came and was like whoa hold up the home is only worth this much not what you guys offered because we offered more than list price and the appraiser was like nope he's like it was dead on at list price so the VA is like we're not giving you more money than what the home is worth so if they deem the home to be worth a hundred thousand dollars and you offered two hundred thousand they're like well sucks to be we're gonna give you a hundred thousand you gotta find a hundred thousand on your own or what you do is you ask the seller to lower the price of the home to the appraised value. So the appraised value was what the home should be worth. And uh, it's kind of hard in a seller's market because the first home that we wanted to get, this is the second home that we actually put an offer on. The first one, same problem. We offered list price though, and when the appraiser came, they were like, nope, it's worth 15,000 less than what list price is. So then we were like, okay, can you guys lower the price $15,000? 
and they didn't even respond. They just put the home back on the market and like two days later, we're like, no, sorry, we're not doing that. That can be a hard thing. And I actually checked like five days ago and that home was still on the market. They still have not sold it and they lowered the price of the home $5,000. They still have another $10,000 to lower it to get it to what it is actually worth. So that's their fault because they could have sold the home a while ago, but now they're still sitting there with the home in their hands and no one to buy it. And the VA appraiser is usually very strict um, most people that I talked to or heard of when we were doing this whole process was that the VA home loan, uh, their appraisers are the most strict by far. Most of the time, like they'll come in and be like, yep, this is uh, what the house is worth is what list price was. So just keep in mind, if you do the VA home loan, that the appraiser might uh, appraise the home for lower than it's actually worth, which can cause problems because once they initiate that, it's called the Tidewater Initiative. Um, it like it, the tick tock tick tock time starts rolling because you only got like two days I think to respond back the seller does with uh, why they place the home for such a high price so basically the seller has to argue like this is why we put it up for this much but overall I think it's a pretty similar experience to uh, just a normal home loan I know I talked a whole bunch about this and a lot of it was probably off topic but I was trying to kind of just fill you guys in because I haven't sat down and actually talked about the whole processes of us buying a home uh, and so I think this will be good for some people especially those of you that are interested in the next year two three years from now uh, of buying a home this is be good information for you because honestly I didn't know a single thing that I just said in this video until I started doing it it was an experience in and of itself. I kind of wished I would have had more knowledge before it all happened because it was kind of like a shock and it was just crazy. Um, so the more knowledge that you guys know, and that's why I make these videos because I'm trying to help you guys out. And if you appreciate that, give this video a thumbs up.